IGF-1 and your immune system. Two relatively unlikely culprits when it comes down to your body being able to produce more muscle. I want to talk today about how these systems work and some things that you can do to start getting a little bit more out of your body when it comes down to building muscle the right way, but also supporting your immune system so you're not getting gnarly upper respiratory tract infections. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. New videos going up every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and bonus videos sprinkled on throughout the week as well. Hit that little bell to turn on notifications so you know whenever I post up live videos too. All right, so there's this thing called colostrum out there. Now, colostrum is the type of milk that is produced right after a mammal gives birth. Honestly, I don't even like calling it a milk because realistically, it doesn't have much nutritional value. But nutritional value isn't important here. What we're looking at is its ability to boost the immune system by having high concentrations of immunoglobulin A, but also tissue and cell regenerating growth factors like insulin-like growth factor. So what I wanna first do in this video is explain what IGF is, insulin-like growth factor. You see, IGF is essentially the next step of growth hormone when it comes down to building muscle. What I mean by that is, Growth hormone is secreted by the pituitary gland, and it basically tells the liver to release IGF. In fact, one of the main purposes of human growth hormone in the first place is to tell IGF to be released. You see, IGF is like the soldiers that run around throughout the body and actually elicit the growth hormone response upon the cells and the tissues. So growth hormone tells the liver to produce IGF, IGF is released and it goes and does the job. So if you work out, for instance, and you work a specific body part, when you go to sleep that night and you produce growth hormone, the liver is gonna release IGF to a localized area to stimulate tissue recovery and ultimately muscle growth. Okay, now let's talk about the immune system for a second. See, the immune system plays a big role here as well because without the immune system, we wouldn't be able to have the inflammatory response that allows us to actually recover. Every time we work out, we are eliciting some kind of immune response in our bodies. So where does colostrum come in and why am I doing this video? Well, interestingly enough, there's just been a lot of research in the world of colostrum. And I'll explain the science in some more detail a little bit later, but I thought that this all roped together pretty darn well. You see, colostrum is there for an infant to get a quick shot of immune system support. When an infant is born, they don't have a lot of the immune support to protect their upper respiratory tract. That's why it's so important that you keep a newborn out of public places for a couple of days until their respiratory system finishes being healed up and completely finishes its cycle of growth. So what we're doing here with colostrum is we're giving ourselves immunoglobulin A, which supports the upper respiratory tract. But additionally, colostrum also has the insulin-like growth factors in it to help grow the intestinal tract of an infant. You see, an infant needs to develop the smooth muscle tissue in an intestinal tract to ultimately be able to digest the milk that's about to come in the next couple of days. So colostrum is super high in the immunoglobulin A that I just mentioned, but it's also very high in lactoferrin. Now I'm gonna talk about lactoferrin in just a second. Additionally, colostrum is high in what are called macrophages and leukocytes. Again, these are sort of the master particles of your immune system, which are important for not just upper respiratory tract infections, but all kinds of other immune responses as well. So let's talk about lactoferrin here for just a second. How does lactoferrin play into all of this? And how come nobody focuses on lactoferrin as the primary benefit of colostrum? I wouldn't go so far as saying it's the primary benefit, but it is pretty darn powerful. You see, what lactoferrin does within the body is it helps us metabolize iron. You see, what's going on inside your body that you don't always realize is you usually have enough iron. Even people that are anemic usually have enough iron. It's just not in a usable form. It's in sort of this unbound state where it's traveling around causing chaos throughout the body and not actually being utilized. So the example that I generally use is if you were to leave a big pile of metal, of iron, out in the elements and you let it sit with some oxygen, what would happen? It would start to rust. Well, the iron that is in our bodies is no different than the iron that we see outside. It's still a metal. And what happens is when it floats around through our body and it's exposed to oxygen that we breathe, it's going to oxidize. So if we're not metabolizing and utilizing that iron, we have a high degree of oxidative stress. This could lead to more soreness, it could lead to more illness, and it could ultimately lead to the fact that you're not recovering from your workouts nearly as well as you could be. So lactoferrin binds to this iron. It chelates the iron so that the iron can actually be utilized or excreted if there's too much, therefore leaving you with much less in the way of free radicals floating around throughout your body. You're not in a situation where you have all this oxidative damage. 
Now this also occurs in your gut. You literally have excess iron particles that sit in your gut. And if you consume lactoferrin, like through colostrum, you're in a situation where that iron gets chelated and expelled and evacuated out of the body. Meaning, you're able to absorb your nutrients better and get more out of the food and the protein that you're consuming. So it does have a direct result on how you build muscle and how you stay lean. Now, colostrum also does a very interesting thing when it comes down to the overall immune system. You see, it activates something known as GC protein-derived macrophage activating factor. Yep, that's a mouthful. And all that means is that colostrum essentially makes the kill switch for your immune system a lot bigger. When you look at how the immune system works, usually it has to have some kind of stimulus to get turned on. Now, you don't want a super overreactive immune system that gets turned on from everything, but you do want one that is able to get turned on appropriately when it's time. So visualize the immune system as having a big red button. And as soon as an infection that is actually worthwhile and worth fighting is seen, that big red button gets pushed. But if you don't have this GC protein-derived macrophage activating factor elevated, that button is really small. So the likelihood of actually flipping the switch and turning on the immune system is significantly smaller. Bovine colostrum has been shown to improve this. And this is actually proven through research. There was one study that looked at participants, 152 of them to be exact, over the course of eight to 12 weeks. Now these participants, they had consumed colostrum. Now what they found is that those that were consuming the colostrum ended up having a reduction in the amount of upper respiratory infections by 44%. So those that took colostrum had 44% less respiratory infections. That is very, very powerful just by adding colostrum into the mix. So this has to do with, of course, the immunoglobulin A, which directly works upon the upper respiratory tract, but also, again, this GC protein-derived macrophage activating factor that I was just talking about. But now let's talk about some of the more fun stuff, the stuff that you might be interested in hearing about as far as your immediate results today go. There are some very powerful physical results that come along with colostrum too. And they stem not only from the immune system, but also from the IGF response that we get within our cells. So the Journal of Applied Physiology conducted a very short study to see the acute response when consuming colostrum. They had participants consume 20 grams of colostrum each day for two weeks or a placebo. Well, those that consumed the colostrum had a 17% increase in localized IGF-1. So localized insulin-like growth factor increased. Okay, additionally, they had an improvement of their IgA by 33%. So a 33% increase in their immunoglobulin A. So improvement in their IGF, allowing more muscle growth, localized growth hormone essentially, and also the ability to fight off an upper respiratory tract infection, keeping them in the gym longer, able to train more, all without compromising their immune system. But there's another study that gets even more intense, and this one has to do with performance. This study was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. Okay, and it took a look at 42 participants that were avid cyclists. So these were athletes. And what they did is they divided them into three groups. One group, they had consume whey protein only at 60 grams. Another group, they had consume colostrum only at 60 grams. And another group, they had consumed whey at 40 grams and colostrum at 20 grams. So a whey-colostrum combination. And they had them conduct two-hour test rides on their bikes for a course of eight weeks, every day for eight weeks. And what they found at the end of these eight weeks were pretty darn crazy. They found that the colostrum-only group was able to improve their ride time by 132 seconds. That's pretty dramatic, okay? Then the colostrum plus whey group was able to improve their ride time by 158 seconds. What about the whey only group? The whey protein only group at 60 grams ended up improving their ride time by 37 seconds. That's a pretty remarkable difference. And a lot of this has to do with the acute IgA response from the colostrum, the immediate effect on the immune system, allowing the body to recover faster, even during a workout, but also the improvement in insulin-like growth factor that allowed the body to recover at a faster rate. So again, at the end of the day, paying attention to your IGF levels and paying attention to your immune system is very, very critical. We don't want our IGF levels to get out of hand, but we want them to be high enough to support the level of activity, and that is critical. Too much IGF is not good, but just enough IGF to support our needs and support what we're doing can be a recipe for the best kind of body that you could possibly imagine. 
And if you wanna check out someone that does have some awesome colostrum, check out Antler Farms Colostrum down below. I put it in the description. They're not even a sponsor of this channel. I just really like their product when it comes down to colostrum. So you can check them out in the description down below and try it out for yourself. As always, I wanna make sure that you keep it locked in here on my channel. And if you have ideas for future videos, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.